All right, Colts fans, we are back with another film session interview, and I'm joined today by Colts linebacker Matthew Adams, uh, you know, going into his third year in the NFL now. Um, you know, it's been a very productive career so far. I mean, the first year you played a ton. Um, and even though last year you didn't play as much on the defensive side of the ball, you were really effective on special teams and, and one of the main playmakers there. So, um, you know, we're getting ready for year three here. We got this crazy um, off season going on, stuff like that. But, um, you know, we're getting ready for year three. What's your mindset so far? What are you kind of working on going into year three here? Uh, year three, I'm just trying to work on like everything just just to make myself a better athlete, um, better, like more knowledge, you know, just not knowing the game and knowing the plays, knowing the assignments and understand why. Um, and most of all, just trying to get my body right for, for the whole entire season because I feel like every year I run out the gas at like the end of the year to where I feel like I can just train my body more to be able to finish the season. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. And, um, you know, one thing that I remember seeing from from your college days also to kind of now, too, is, um, you know, when you were in college, you were on uh, Bruce Feldman's freaks list. You know, you were uh, just a workout freak, an athletic freak. And and obviously we've seen that on film these last couple of years as well. Um, has that workout room aspect of your like your game or whatever, has that always been just such a big part of your game? Uh, yes. You know, uh, along with like working out and, and being a weight room guy, that's also injury prevention. Mm -hmm. uh, I, re I never really had a, a major injury that that required surgery or anything like that due to the weight room and just keeping your body strong and durable, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, other than that, you know, the that, that, uh, weight room is a big part of my game as in like striking and explosive first steps and stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. And that definitely shows on film, which we're going to watch here in a second. Uh, before we jump to this film, though, I see you have a couple of jerseys up there on the wall behind you. Um, I got Darius Leonard. I've got Ed Oliver. And is that um, Hayden over from um, from Jacksonville as well? Oh, and the land. So you got a bunch of your Houston guys there with you, right? Houston guys. Yeah. Was that all from games that you just switched jerseys with? Right. Awesome. Yes, and then how did you get the Darius Leonard one, though? When did he give you that one? Uh, it was like – I want to say after the end of this year, I think he had an extra jersey. I was like, "Yo, I need that." He, like, he, he traded it, <laughs> put it on your wall there, and have it all together. That's nice. <laughs> awesome, man. So here we're gonna jump into some film here, and and this was um one of your. Can you can you see this pretty well right here? Yeah, I can see it. Okay, awesome. So uh, this was the game against Pittsburgh. Um, you know, obviously that that game didn't go great for you guys towards the end, but um, you know, this was a big play that you had where you were able to shoot up the middle here and get this tackle for a loss. Um, and yeah, this is one of your best defensive plays of the year. I like. And and when it comes to goal line defense, you know, are you really ever worried about the pass here, especially when you're on the one, or are you just kind of crashing in trying to like, sell out for that run play? Uh, yeah, I'm I'm all, I'm downhill strictly downhill on this one. You know, I react to the pass late, but down here, you know, it's big boy football. You know, they got like a extra extra offensive tackle in the game, like two tight ends, fullback. Mm -hmm. You know, it's 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 coming downhill. Yeah. So is, is I mean, do you guys even play gap football here with your linebacker with linebackers here on the goal line, or is it just shoot forward um, and uh, try to get that instant penetration? We got gap. Uh, everyone has a gap, but down here you get a, a lot of sloppy because it's just it's this man on man win your matchup type thing down here. So it's it's just you come down here and you just read off the people right here. Okay. And so you're, are you reading just the guys blocking down here and then you're coming off the backside, figuring that runs going, uh, I guess it's kind of going left. It's going up middle. I mean, is that what you're kind of reading here? Right now you just want to stay tight to everything. You know, you see the pulling guard in front of you. You want to be tight as, as tight because the running back is taught to, to scrape off the, the, the butt cheek of whatever his aim point is. Like if his aim point that guard, he's going to, mm -hmm. He's going to go right off the butt cheat of the guard. You know what I mean? So everything is crashing down. So you just want to stay tight. You don't want to have no air. Yeah. And, you know, kind of what we talked about um, start this, you know, that weight room, that physicality, it's always a big part of your game. And when we go to the other clips here, we'll see a lot more of your physicality and, and your and that kind of, you know, ability in your game. Um, but especially in the goal line here, how, how big is it just to, to be physical going forward and play, you know, kind of match up well with those offensive linemen there and getting in traffic. 
uh, you just you just got to bring it. You know, you got you got to bring it with everything in you. All two hundred thirty pounds, and you just got to come downhill. You 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 see right here, you got the Nico Autry with great push and penetration, with, mm -hmm. which helps me just come. Basically, I'm just coming clean it up. You see Danico right there, right there. Yep, he's the one crashing down. Here, let me get yeah, that. He's right here for everyone watching. He's right here crashing down. Get great penetration. I just, I just play off him right there. I, I feel him like getting up field. I just play off him. Yeah, for sure. And then uh, before we get to this next clip here, just because oh, that's my computer, get that off the screen. Um, I want to talk about these guys around you here. You know, you got Bobby Ogrieke here, Darius Leonard, I believe. Anthony Walker might not be on this play. I don't know where Anthony Walker is, but, you know, you guys have a really good linebacker group. Um, probably one of the best in football when you put in the starters along with you and, and Franklin, EJ Speed in the backup. Um, how is it in that linebacker group? How, how do you guys kind of mix, you know, also competing with each other to, for playing time, but also, you know, being teammates and, and playing off each other? I mean, we – most of us came in together. Um, Walker was there before us. So – all of, it's like a brotherhood we created to where like um, we're tight, we're so tight that like one can't fall without the other. Mm -hmm. and, and other words, like we always competing to get better. You know, um, if there's no competition, then the, the room is like it's 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 not getting any better. So we always push and stand on top of each other game and trying to learn from each other. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And um, like I said, it's one of the, it's definitely one of the better. Um, linebacker groups in the league. I'm sure that you would you would agree with that as well. Um, but getting to – I want to get a little bit on special teams here because, um, you know, special teams is a big part of the NFL, which, you know, it's not – you know, it's not really something that people will talk about on Sports Center or anything like that, people talk about on Twitter or anything like that. But special teams are a big part of the game. It's how, you know, players who aren't starters make rosters and how they stick on rosters. And uh, these last two years you've played a ton of special teams – um, and this one play here was just, you know, I just want to throw this play up in the background. We talk special teams where you're able to get down and make a tackle here. Um, but what kind of mindset do you have to have, you know, to be a special teams player in the NFL? Uh, you got to have – it's just desire at the end of the day. You know, special team, it breaks down to more of a one-on-one -on -one matchup. You already know your matchup coming into the game. You know his tendency. You know his weaknesses, his strength. And, like, it's, it's, it's basically you just – like trim it down to a one on one. It's like you beat your matchup, you find the ball. You know what I mean? So right here, I'm just I'm running down. I got speed. I know who's coming to block me. I know like I know I have, I got double teams and just watching film prior toward like I noticed that I can I got a little wiggle room to split the double team, try to split the double team. Yeah. And um, that's what I do right here on this play. Yeah, and it's a really good play. Get them right back at the 20-yard line. Um, did you play a lot of special teams in college at all, or is it kind of something that you played mostly here in the NFL now? Uh, I played a lot of special teams in college as well. I was one of them guys that always just wanted to be on the field. Yeah. If, yeah, no, I got you for sure. And, um, you know, you guys are building a really good special teams unit here. You know, George Odom was really good uh, for you guys last year. Uh, Ashton Doolin was a really good addition. Um you know, what would you kind of say about the overall special teams unit and those other guys who are out there with you? And how would you kind of feel about that group overall? It's, 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 it's a good group of guys because everybody's hungry. Nobody like, has that, I don't want to play special team mentality. Everybody want to be like, coach, I want to do this. I want to do this. Like everybody wants to play special team and everybody wants to be on the field and want to make plays on a special team. And so it makes it a great special team group. Yeah, definitely. And now I want to get to some of your uh, snaps here at Sam in 2018. Because I thought you had some some really good highlights here. And this is definitely one of my favorite plays here against the Dolphins, where you make um, this tackle at the line of scrimmage on the wide receiver screen. Um, but so you, you're lined up right here over the slot receiver. Are, are you going to be in – I don't know if you remember this play especially, but are you going to be in that man coverage here, or is this kind of like a zone to start off this play? We're in a zone right now. Um in our zone coverage, we 100% on uh, QB. Mm -hmm. So we're just reading the QB and reacting in our zone coverage. So is that what made this play so easy for you to read? The second that you saw your, you know, the slot guy go out to block here, that's when you were able to react right. and come downhill? Right. It's like playing linebacker, you kind of got to be able – you got to be cross-eyed a little bit, especially being outside the box mm -hmm. uh, because you got you to gotta feel the receivers but see the quarterback. Yeah. So left eye is on the receivers, your right eye on the quarterback, basically. 
Yeah, definitely. And then we kind of saw towards the end of 2018, you were getting a lot of playing time. You know, you were getting out there a lot with the starters, uh, playing some Sam, playing a little bit and off ball like this. Um, you know, and you kind of got into a really good groove. You made a couple plays here. I know against Jacksonville and against the Giants, you made a couple big plays. Um, you know, how did that last half of 2018 feel, you know, compared to that first half when you were just kind of a rookie adjusting to the game? Uh, first half first half of this, my 2018 uh, season, my rookie year, it was just just go. You know what I mean? Like, you might not know all the the the, the playbook inside and out, the, all the little tweaks and checks and stuff like that, but just – just be a football player, just pull the trigger and go, you know, just make football simpler so you can play fast. Towards the end, um, like, it's a long season your, your rookie year because you're coming from combine training to camp to to a whole 20-game 20, 20 season to, to where, like, you got to you, – you hit that rookie wall. They, a lot of people say they're a rookie wall, but um, you just got to fight through it and keep your body right. And, like, towards the end of the season – it's a it's a it's a time where you want to get comfortable. I feel like towards the end of the season, I I had started to get comfortable, just just like you know, like not much scouting or not watching film as much, and it, it shows towards the end of the season I was missing plays that I normally would make in the beginning of the season. So gotcha. You just gotta stay uncomfortable throughout the season. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But, uh, you know, this play was a big play in this game. You guys were in the middle of a comeback here, and this I think this was on third down here. Um, how, how big did this play feel at that time for you? And, and is it something that you kind of look back on pretty well on that rookie year? Uh, I mean, I, 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 I've, we've seen this play a lot in the meeting rooms. Um, at the time, it was like – it was a perfect time to play because I think it was like – it was a t it was a close game and it was yeah. like the final drive for them and it was like a perfect time and play. Yeah, no, definitely, it was a really fun play here. And then getting to this uh, next play here, and this next play was um, I call this play just absolute bullshit uh, because this is what the, this is your first career sack um, that was taken away from you by by the refs here. Um, I mean, I don't know. I mean, you drop your head a little bit, but it's I don't yeah. know. What was your thoughts afterwards when, you know, you're, you're getting up, you're celebrating this, your first career right. sack, and the rest kind of took it away from you. What were kind of your thoughts going on there? My, my first thought, as soon as I made contact, it was like, I, I don't want to land on the QB. I think <laughs> I, I sprained my wrist right here, like trying to, like, keep my body weight from off the quarterback because you're not supposed to land on top of Yeah, him. you're crawling off him here. <laughs> I'm trying to crawl and catch my weight. I think I sprained my wrist right there, and then Nico come over flip put his weight on me. So <laughs> at the end of the day, like, I didn't see the flag, and I was celebrating. Next thing you know, it was just quiet. I was like, dang, like, a lot of my teammates ain't celebrating with me, you know? <laughs> it's a flag. Oh, I, I, I see why. Uh, I still – I mean, when you guys were in the meeting room after the, after the game, was there – you know, were the coaches saying, like, oh, you can't lead with your head that way, or was it anything in particular? You no, know, they always coaching in the – one of – see me make these plays but legally uh so they told me just lower my target zone you know yeah yeah for sure but this um i mean i'm sure this was a great play from your rookie season even despite the uh <laughs> the um the penalty here but um was this a design blitz for you off the edge here and that's why you were able to get you know so much room right. here to get downhill right so i lined up on the edge quite a bit and sometimes i'm coming sometimes i'm not it's like anywhere about it. it's the same alignment everything pretty much looked the same and um, I just – I caught him sleep, uh, sleeping on me and, like, I came – made the play, easy play. Yeah. And I, I definitely saw, you know, a lot that rookie year. They did put you in that kind of on the line like that on the outside there. And I think that bodes really well with, you know, your strength and that weight room stuff we were talking about. You were able to hold up at the, at the point of attack better than most linebackers. Was that kind of the reason why they were always putting you on that edge so you can help in that run defense and also hold up at the point of attack? Right. I would agree with that. You know, being an outside backer, it's a lot of setting the edge. Mm -hmm. and you got to set the edge on fullback, tight ends, offensive tackles, you know, so so the other guys can run, you know what I mean, and make the plays. Yeah, definitely. And then this last play, we actually have you some setting some edge here. Um, so you're actually playing off the ball a little bit here, um, right. standing up alongside, I think that's Franklin, and I can't even tell who the other guy is. I think that's Leonard on the other side there. Um, but on this play here, we can just sit, go right with the snap here. Um, where would be kind of your gap on this play when you see 
um, you know, the play coming like this. Is this your gap right in here? Yeah, my play right here is the, is the B gap. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, like, we're playing off the ball so we can read off the D lineman. That's why we're playing off the ball. So I'm supposed to hammer that fullback, but I, I see that Jabal loses the edge, so I just keep playing. Gotcha. And then how, you know, when you're playing linebacker, how much is – how much of it is, you know, filling your gap, but also kind of filling in for gaps that your defense alignment potentially lose or something like that? Like how much goes into like filling and kind of covering for those guys? It's, it's, it's more so like, it's more so like doing your job and then some, you know what I mean? You, mm -hmm. you take care of your, you do, you do what you're supposed to do, your assignment, and then play off that. Don't be a robot after that. Just be a, be an athlete, be a, be a football player after you've done your job. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then how much kind of goes into, I guess, having, you know, trust in your linebackers here? Because, you know, when you're playing that outside, you have to trust not only that, you know, Franklin is kind of covering right, right, right back this way and also, you know, that I think that's al Muhammad coming backside. How much do you kind of have to trust those guys around you when you're filling outside to, to kind of fill back on the inside there so everything kind of stays cohesive? I mean, you, you, build, you build trust at practice. You know, we, we rep this 100 times a week. So you know that he, he, he like why like why wouldn't he be there? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because like you see him walk through it, you see him talk about it in the meet room, you see him practice it, you see him walk through it again. So it's like it's it's, it's natural that I know like Z is going to be inside the fullback when I hammer him. Yeah, definitely. And then uh, kind of finish off this interview here. You know, you guys added a lot of defensive talent this off season. Um, starting with DeForest Buckner, who's an all-pro, uh, Pro Bowl type player. Uh, Xavier Rhodes, who was a Pro Bowler, added a lot of talent to this defense. Uh, how excited are you to play with those kind of guys here on the defense this year? Uh, I'm very excited. You know, it's just like because everything starts up front with the D line. You know, you got you got Big Grover. I expect like my expectation for Grover is just through the roof. Uh, Grover Stewart, and then you got Defoe helping them out on the inside. Then you got Justin Houston and and Ben and Kamo, like a lot of athletic pass rusher. It's, it's, it starts up front. So once the D-line can stop the run and affect the pass, it makes playing linebacker and safety and corner a whole lot easier. Yeah, and, you know, you, you brought up Grover Stewart there, and I wasn't going to ask this, but, you know, Grover was a player when I was watching film last year I thought was one of the most underrated players on your guys' team. Um, I mean, just a, a stout run defender. Um, what are you kind of expecting from him this year, though? I mean, as he kind of takes that next step. I mean, he's going into a contract year, I believe. So um, it's, it's not yeah. even what he do on game day. It's just what he does, at, what he does at practice every day. And it's like he's 100 miles per hour on everything he does, and he's, he really works – at everything, you know what I mean? So it's just like, I don't see nobody can stop him, you know what I mean? Yeah. He's yeah, a big we, South Georgia born person. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, he's different. Oh, he's a stud, man. I, I think this year is going to be huge for him. And I think people are sleeping on him because they brought in, uh, you know, DeForest Buckner and, and mm -hmm. you know, Autry's still there and all these other guys. But Man, he was he was really good last year. So yeah, I think he ran like a four eight or something like that. Like, I like three hundred forty pounds or something yeah. too. Like he's huge, he's fast, and he's big, strong, and fast. Like yeah, yeah. No, he's a good one for sure. Um, but to conclude this interview here, you know, we we talked about the talent that you guys brought in. We talked a little bit about your your game from last year and also from your rookie year. Uh, but what can we kind of expect, you know, going forward from not only you but also this Colts team here in in twenty twenty if, if we have a season. Hopefully, we have a season. Uh, I'm pretty sure we'll have the season. Like I can't imagine football, like life without football. Yeah. But uh, I feel like we're like as of right now, we're like taking advantage of each day. You know, it, it's still an off season, but for us, we're 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 getting it going right now. Uh, we're being productive in meetings, and I feel like everybody's just coming into their own. Like everybody's just understanding their role and 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 want to maximize their role for the team and like um going into this year like for me I just want to and for all my teammates we just we came up with like we trying to reinvent ourselves to our team and like how can we reinvent ourselves to the team and like for me it's just being being more dialed in and detailed to to the small things and and being a, a, a everyday player on special teams and every down player 
and being able to, to fill in like you know a lot there's and walker took a lot of reps being that next linebacker to come in or bobby you know what i mean to come in and play any position and like to where there's no drop off mm-hmm. so for me just mastering my current role and stuff like that awesome man awesome well hey i appreciate you taking the time today and um you know good luck this next season and hopefully again we we get to, to play in some football and and we can see the colts make a pretty big run this year yes sir